Every year, we round up some of the best new and upcoming games of the current year on all the major platforms. And today, we're talking Xbox. Here are 25 games releasing throughout 2023. Starting off with number 25, let's talk the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This one is significant because on the one hand, it's another horror or movie franchise based thing centered around a multiplayer style framework. Uh, this one just looks cool. This one is specifically based around the original movie and you play as either victims trapped in in the house of the family, or you play as members of the gross family pursuing these victims. The creepy, nasty house, its basement, and everything has been lovingly recreated, as well as a bit of farmland and countryside surrounding it. And it's filled with all types of traps and tricks that you're gonna either have to outwit or maintain, depending on who you're playing as. As much as I would rather just play as Leatherface and just run around and kill people, uh, what they built here does seem to be pretty compelling. It is also from Gun Interactive, uh, the people behind the Friday the 13th game, which we really like despite its flaws. We're gonna have to wait and see how this one really ends up, but it is releasing sometime in 2023. Next over at number 24, we have Exoprimal. This is a PvEVP game featuring people wearing really cool kind of exoskeleton style robot suits facing off against dinosaurs. Exoprimal's main game sets two teams of five players against one another as they attempt to defeat dinosaurs and accomplish all types of video gamey goals. All the exosuits have their own little advantages. Uh, there's like tanks, healers, ranged. And while you're of course squaring off against really awesome looking and dangerous dinosaurs, you're also gonna have to worry about other players as well. Well, it looks a little silly, but the gameplay could be pretty compelling. And it is from Capcom, who has had a lot of W's on the board lately. So we'll have to wait and see, but this is dropping on all the platforms sometime in 2023. Next over at number 23, we have the long-awaited Path of Exile 2. This is the follow-up to 2013's Path of Exile with a new seven-act storyline. It's 20 years after the previous game, and there's gonna be new mechanics, new classes, a totally different skill-based system, ranged equipment, and a lot more. Really, uh, the original Path of Exile was pretty underrated, and while we don't know too many details about this one yet, specifically even the platforms, we are expecting to hear more of it sometime this year. Next over at number 22, we have Wolong Fallen Dynasty. Uh, this takes place in a kind of fantastical China, and it's got swords, spears, warriors, and over-the-top monsters and creatures. Yeah, it's another Souls-like style game, but it's from what we consider the people the best at it other than from software. We're talking Team Ninja, the people behind Neo and Neo 2. Uh, this game gives you tons more flexibility in movement and combat styles and introduces more magic spells and a kind of give and take sword parry block mechanic, kind of like Sekiro. And you're making your way through pretty linear levels, exploring and grinding souls and killing bosses. And while it's not the most like technical Technically advanced game by any means, it's essentially Sekiro with more RPG elements and good linear straightforward gameplay. It's really cool and you should check it out. Next over at number 21, we have Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon. This is from software, the Dark Souls developers, uh, returning to one of their old franchises. And while little is known about it right now, uh, the tease we did get looks really cool visually and emphasizes all the mechs you're gonna be controlling in the game. It's gonna promise to give full control over the mechs and allow you to do various actions in combat to topple seemingly challenging enemies. They've said that they're not making it a Souls-like game, but expect some challenge. If it's anything like the previous games, expect a lot of mech options and customization choices. And all we know is that this is dropping this year and expect it to be a big deal. Next over at number 20, we have Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl. We've been looking forward to this one for a long time and after many delays, it seems like we're finally getting it in 2023. This is actually the first Stalker game to really formally come to consoles and it's a big deal because the series was pretty revolutionary for PC first person shooters and, and more immersive style gameplay. And you're dropped in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. There's like mutated monsters and weird scientific abnormalities going on. And it's up to you to fight, experiment, endure, and survive. We'll admit this has a lot to live up to considering the pedigree of the previous games, but we're really looking forward to getting our hands on it. Next over at number 19, we have Kerbal Space Program 2, which as of right now is releasing in early access on PC, but expect it to come to consoles, including the Xbox. And once again, you're going to be building and creating and launching, uh, but with new tools and mechanics. Expect new propulsion methods, habitation modules to build houses on the surfaces of planets, orbital and planetary colonies, and interstellar travel. And you're gonna be able to do it all in multiplayer. These games have a cult following for a reason, and we're really excited to see this one fully roll out. 
Next over at number 18, we have Atomic Heart, a quirky, kind of flawed first-person shooter that's actually a lot of fun. Think Bioshock, or more specifically the newer Wolfenstein games with a kind of alternate history type thing, but this time with the Soviet Union, advanced science, and a bunch of robots gone crazy. It's up to you to shoot them and whack them with stuff and progress through a really interesting world. It's got some tedious elements to it, but graphically it's impressive and the world is intriguing, and it's got some good skill and weapon upgrade mechanics. Mechanics. It's a satisfying playthrough. Consider checking it out if you haven't already. Next over at number 17, we have Arc 2. This is the massively anticipated follow-up to the original Arc one of the biggest, most popular survival games, and this time it's featuring Vin Diesel. There's still a lot of things to be revealed. We're still waiting on this one, but as of right now, we think we're gonna see it in 2023. Next over at number 16, we have Minecraft Legends. This is an action strategy game where once again, Minecraft is expanding into different genres. I think they did a pretty good job with like the Diablo dungeon crawler style of Minecraft dungeons. And with Legends, essentially what you're doing is building up defenses to fight against encroaching forces like creepers, and skeletons and all those things you'd expect in Minecraft, but with bigger scale action, uh, mounts and horseback and cool weapons. And if Minecraft Dungeons was anything to go on, we expect this to be pretty cool. A fun diversion from the standard Minecraft thing, a good use of the world and the style. As of right now, no final release date, but we know it's coming in 2023. Now, next over at number 15, we have State of Decay 3, a game which, we'll be honest, we don't totally know if it's coming in 2023, but we're gonna make a guess that it is because we've been waiting for it for a really long time. As of right now, we don't know too much about it other than that it might have overhauled graphics and a new snow type setting, just judging from the cinematic trailer we've seen. After State of Decay 2 with Undead Labs, I think there's a lot they could really do to expand and grow this formula. And State of Decay as a franchise just has a ton of potential. Ask anyone who's played one of the previous games. We're really hoping they pull it off this time and really advance things, and we're hoping to see it this year. Next over at number 14, we have Assassin's Creed Mirage. This is an Assassin's Creed kind of spin-off style game that isn't as massive as Valhalla, Odyssey, or Origins. Uh, this is more of a back to the basics approach with Assassin's Creed, once again being set in the Middle East like the original game, but this time you're playing as Basim, an assassin character you may know from Assassin's Creed Valhalla's story. A more story focused, a more assassination focused adventure, and not an expansive 100 hour RPG. Sounds pretty interesting. To be honest, I still really love the original Assassin's Creed game, so I'm excited to see what they could do here and really kind of throw it back a little bit. But as of right now, it's Ubisoft. We've only seen a cinematic trailer and it's a lot of talk, but either way, we do know this game is dropping this year. Next over at number 13, we have Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. Now, this one is one we've been looking forward to for a long time, but unfortunately, more recently, the more we've seen of the game, we've grown a little skeptical of it being a kind of online only games as a service style game with monetization and skins where we were just hoping to kind of have another superhero game, a regular old traditional Arkham style game, considering it is from the developers. We're still gonna wait to reserve judgment for when we finally get our hands on it. That's what we do here. The actual presentation of the Justice League, the Suicide Squad, this Arkhamverse in this game does look pretty cool, but gameplay wise, the jury's still out for us personally. As of right now though, at least we know we're gonna see it spring 2023. Next over at number 12, we have the Dead Space Remake. EA and Motive really knocked it out of the park with this one. It was very much an if it ain't broke, don't fix it type of thing. It is the original game completely rebuilt from the ground up, but with little tiny additions to make things a bit stronger, add a little bit more exploration and replay value, but ultimately not lose the heart and soul and scary vibes of the original. If you've never played the original Dead Space, this is a great way to experience it. The graphics are incredible, the gameplay is still really fun, and the the horror and everything is really stressful, but in a good way. Next over at number 11, if we're talking about horror game remakes, we have to talk about the Resident Evil 4 remake. If you've played the Resident Evil 2 remake or the Resident Evil 3 remake, you pretty much know what to expect here, but it seems like they're really keeping things similar to the original and like Dead Space, only expanding and tweaking and adding where it makes sense. There's a parry mechanic, there's a little bit more exploration on boat, there's a couple more things to discover, and both enemies and allies seem a little bit more capable this time around. We just hope they keep it weird and wild and Thankfully, we don't have to wait too much longer because the game is releasing March 24th, 2023. Next over at number 10, we have Street Fighter VI, which, I mean, have you seen the gameplay of this one? It looks absolutely wild. 
It's been a really long time since Street Fighter V, so fans are clamoring for something new, and we've gotten a look at a bunch of new characters and new modes, specifically Battle Hub and World Tour. Now, Battle Hub is an online lobby where players can kind of socialize and take place in little activities, and then World Tour is a single player story mode with a whole actual city world to explore. They're really going big on this one, and we're looking forward to playing it later on in 2023. Next over at number 9 we have Hogwarts Legacy. This is the Hogwarts adventure game a lot of Harry Potter fans have really been looking forward to. Essentially it gives you a massive puzzle filled quest ridden Hogwarts and surrounding area to explore and adventure in unconnected to the original stories because it takes place much earlier in the late 1800s and from combat to flying around on brooms it's very cool. Next over at number 8 we have Alan Wake 2, the long awaited follow up to the original game where we never actually thought we would get this. Despite featuring the original developers, uh, the actors in the game and everything, it seems like they're going for a very different approach now uh, with the game being specifically survival horror, not more of like a horror-esque adventure type game. Just judging from the mood setting trailer we've seen, things seem darker, creepier, more atmospheric. And we love Remedy games. They've been on a roll for a long time, most recently with Control, so we're really looking forward to this. Even though it wasn't announced too long ago, it seems like they've been working on this one for a while because it is confirmed to be releasing in 2023. Next over at number seven, we have Redfall. Uh, this is the next game from Arcane, the folks behind most recently Deathloop, but also the Dishonored series. And this takes place in a fake town called Redfall, Massachusetts, that is overrun with vampires and monsters. You'll be able to play this game either solo or with three other players, and each of you are going to choose between four available characters with their own distinct traits, personalities, and abilities, and many of those abilities work together. So while there is a really cool emphasis on quirky teamwork, Work and using your gadgets and abilities together, I want to see how this one goes down solo. While it was originally very much considered Arcane's spin on Left 4 Dead, Arcane has actually come out and clarified that it's a little bit more like a Far Cry style game, but with a lot of co-op action. So we're excited to see what this thing actually is. And thankfully we don't have to wait too much sooner because it's releasing May 2nd, 2023. Now next over at number six, we have Dragon Age Dreadwolf. This one has been in the works for a very long time and we're hoping we finally see it this year. And it's a big deal because we're hoping it's a return to form for Bioware. They are coming off of stuff like Anthem and Mass Effect Andromeda. And I mean, at this point, Dragon Age is really a crowd pleaser. I think people love those games. They want more of them. And Bioware only has to do a couple of things to really make people happy. And although we haven't seen too much of the game other than some big flashy trailers, we're hoping this thing is really just a kick-ass big RPG set in the world of Dragon Age. It is really an underrated universe. It is beloved for a reason. It has kind of like a cult following at this point. And we hope we get something this year. Now, next over at number five, we have Star Wars Jedi Survivor. This is the next adventure for Cal Kestis in the Star Wars world, featuring multiple different lightsaber fighting styles, seemingly a lot more customization of those lightsabers and much, much bigger and explorable worlds with a revamped map and fast travel system. And we just really can't wait to see where this one goes because Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order really did a good job of slotting into the Star Wars universe and feeling like a good natural Star Wars thing that wasn't forced. Can Respawn keep this up? I mean, they haven't really had any misses, if you think about it. We'll know for sure when the game releases April 28th, 2023. Next over at number four, we have Diablo 4. This is the big one, ladies and gentlemen. If you're a Diablo fan, you know that these games can be absolutely massive and also uh, there's some room for failure. But from what we've seen of Diablo 4, it seems pretty cool. Bigger worlds, deeper character classes, some pretty incredible graphics, and hopefully just lots of fun monster slaying. Activision Blizzard has been on thin ice for a lot of people for a while though, so like I said, there is room for error here. Thankfully, the old Diablo games aren't going anywhere, but we're hoping this one is good, and we're gonna be checking it out June 6th, 2023. Next over at number three, we have Senua Saga Hellblade 2. It's been a while since we've seen much of this one, uh, but this is seemingly one of Xbox's big heavy hitters with some crazy graphics. With the gameplay we have seen, this game looks absolutely wild, but we're really in it for the story and presentation. The original Hellblade was nothing short of incredible with some repetitive combat, but otherwise a really cool adventure. So for them to expand upon that, we're in day one. Now it doesn't have a specific release date yet, but we know we should be seeing it sometime in 2023. 
Next over at number two, we have Forza Motorsport. This seems to be the big one, the end all be all of the mainline Forza series. Not the Forza Horizon series, which is absolutely incredible, uh, but the deeper, more sim-like Forza games. This one is dropping any number, really. It's just called Forza Motorsport, and it's gonna feature a bunch of cars, new tracks, and tons of new tricks to the graphics. Like, the, the things are really, really detailed this time around. I know that's what they always kind of focus on when they announce these games, but it is cool to see. The level of detail and appreciation for these cars is always appreciated as car fans. And we're just happy to see another racing game like take advantage of Xbox consoles and PC. As of right now, we know this thing is releasing in spring 2023. Now down to number one, of course, we have Starfield. This is Bethesda's next big RPG that the creators of uh, the Elder Scrolls, uh, the newer Fallout games, and this is a completely new IP intellectual property for them. Uh, a totally new world about space exploration and planets inhabited by colonizers, and it's up to you to build your own ship and do some good old RPG questing. People in recent years have grown skeptical of Bethesda, but us here, we're just curious to see what a new thing from them is like. They've been working on Fallout and Elder Scrolls games back to back for a long time now, and they're finally doing something different. The potential is there for this to be a pretty big thing. And as of right now, we know it's releasing on the Xboxes and PC. Those are 25 games, but of course there's way more to cram in. So we have a bonus section. We got to give props to Like a Dragon Ishin, a really fun Yakuza style spinoff. Black Myth Wukong, hopefully coming this year. This Souls-like Chinese mythology game has been on our radar for a long time. Also, Dead Island 2. This game is finally releasing and is gonna bring zombie killing and smashing to a fictional Los Angeles. And last but certainly not least, Robocop Rogue City, a first person adventure, seemingly a faithful recreation of Robocop from the people who recently did a pretty good job on the last Terminator game. I am very much looking forward to this one. But like we said, there are so many games to talk about, more than we could fit on this list. So let us know what you're looking forward to playing on your Xbox in 2023. If you play on different platforms, be sure to check out our videos for PC and PlayStation as well. But for now, thanks for watching. Clicking the like button really helps us out and we'll see you guys next time.